Thank you very much, choir. You guys are just out of this world, I tell you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Please, you may be seated this morning. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. Um, very briefly this morning, I want to share with you on a subject I have titled, Creating Your Desired Future. Creating Your Desired Future. I would strongly admonish you to get the, the messages of the first and the second service and the service on Wednesday. Very powerful messages preached. Um, very frankly, I am just continuing from where Pastor Ebele stopped. So getting the messages of the first and second service and listening to it, I, I think it would really help you in getting a deeper understanding of the things that I'm going to be sharing with us this morning. Um, I want to start out by saying that time can be compartmentalized or dimensioned into three. Number one, the past, the present, and the future. So when you look at time, it can be the past, can be the present or the future. The truth also is that there is very little we can do about the past. The past is past. But the present is a gift that God has given us. Not to relieve the past, because that's what a lot of people do. They use their present to relieve the memories and the things that have happened in the past. The present is a gift that God has given us to create the future that we desire. So as we're all seated here today, if you decide that, you know what, after service, I am going to go to a particular eatery to eat. Now, that wasn't in your plan before, but you just decided. Now, when you leave the service, what future have you created? going to the eatery. You get what I'm saying? So your present is a gift that God has made available to us to create the future that we desire. The truth also is that everyone is always creating a particular kind of future. Whether you desire it or not, everyone. Meaning, the choice to create the kind of future that you desire is absolutely in your hands. God has blessed man so, especially if you're a believer. You can create the kind of future that you want. And you see, the way life works, if you leave the creation of your future to chance. You would arrive in that future and it might not be the future you desire. Because the truth also is that nothing changes because of time. Time does not change anything. If you leave a building, build fantastically built house, you leave it alone, you lock the door, and you leave it for 10 years, when you come back, you'll be amazed that even though no one lived in that house, the whole building will be dilapidated. Do you understand what I'm saying? Why? Because the way life has been designed, with time, things dilapidate. If you buy a brand new phone today, and you're so excited, it's the latest phone in town, I give that phone two years. In fact, now one year, but let me just be conservative. Two years. The phone becomes one of the phones they made in the past. Why? A new one will come. So things are designed. If you live your life unintentionally, what is going to happen is that you'll be increasing in age, but might be reducing in impact. So you read in the Bible, Jesus lived physically on the face of the earth 33 years. A guy by the name Methuselah lived that many years, 
900 and but the impact of Jesus' ministry is still being felt on the earth today. The only thing we have to say about Methuselah is who he gave birth to and the few verses in the Bible that talks about him. So life has been designed naturally to deteriorate. Things do not change because time is going. Things change because truth is gained and rightly applied. You want to change anything? You want to create a certain kind of future? You must go for truth and apply that truth. Praise God. In Genesis chapter 8 verse 22, the Bible tells us seed time and harvest would not cease. Meaning that the way life has been designed, if you ever want a harvest, then you have to sow the seed. If you want to harvest, you have to sow the seed. So this morning, I want to very briefly, even though if you've listened to the first and second service again, I mean you would understand what I'm going to be talking about, I want to introduce you to a principle. A principle that can help you us create the kind of future that we want. Genesis chapter 11. Genesis chapter 11, from verses 1 to the 6th verse. Genesis 11, from verses 1. The Bible says, And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. And they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Verse 5. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. Now verse 6. And this was what God said. And the Lord God said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now, I want us to read this part together. One, two, let's go. Now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have what? Imagined to do. I want to talk to us about our imagination this morning. Because I have discovered that the greatest battle, or one of the greatest battles any individual will fight, would be the battle of the kind of picture they sustain in their mind about anything. He says, this is God speaking. I mean, if it was someone else, maybe you can excuse it, but this is God. God said, ha, nothing, nothing can be restrained from these people. If they've imagined it, they are going to achieve it. What is our imagination? Your imagination is the pictures of your mind that you might not be able to see with your physical eyes, but those pictures in your mind, that is your imagination. The pictures in your mind. And I've come to discover that every time that God wants to work in the life of a person, the first thing God begins to do is to change the picture in your mind. Because if the picture in your mind is wrong, and the confessions of your mouth is right, the reality would be the picture in your mind, not what you're saying. So every time God wants to do a walk in the life of a person, God begins to work on the pictures in the mind of that individual. You go to the Bible. In the book of Genesis chapter 13, Talking about Abraham, God had spoken a lot of great things about Abraham, Genesis chapter 12. But when you get to the 13th verse, verse 14, and this is a very interesting 
verse because the Bible says, And the Lord God said to Abraham, after that Lot was separated from him. You see, the Lot was Abraham's nephew. But what is also interesting is the fact that the name Lot means a veil. You know when you cover a lady with a veil? You know when ladies want to get married, they cover them with a veil. Then they say you may take off the veil to check if you're marrying the right person. Or I've never seen it being the wrong person, except one guy we'll talk about later, Jacob. So <laughs> Now, that is a veil. The name Lot means a veil. So maybe it is not coincidental that after Lot was separated from him, God now said to him, Lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art, northward, southward, eastward, westward. Verse 15. He says, verse 15, please. Media, maybe I should just use my Bible. Thank you. It says, for all the land which thou, what? Seest. To thee will I give it and to thy seed forever. Now, I want to ask you a very honest question. Now, what land did God promise Abraham? Who knows the answer? Talk to me. It's not a trick question. You know the answer. <laughs> Just what? What? No, 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 no. That's not. What land did he promise Abraham? Okay, good. Canaan. It's not as far. I said it's not a trick question. Trust me. <laughs> Now, from where Abraham was standing, was it possible for him to actually see the old land with his physical eyes? He could not have. So what God was saying here was deeper than what you can see with your optical eyes. And that is why there, were, there was a play of words. He says, look, but it is the one you see that I will give you. If what you see is what you are looking at, then that's all I will give you was a blank check. Actually, when you read Romans, you would get to understand, verse chapter 4, that Abraham saw the whole world. He didn't see Canaan. <laughs> he saw the whole world. He saw bigger than what God had said initially. And God said, wow. And that was the land that God gave him. Praise God. The land that you see. I want to ask you a very genuine question this morning. What do you see? You know, if you keep reading Genesis 13, keep reading verse 16, you will see that God started to do something to Abraham's mind. From verse 16, God now said, you know what? No, Genesis 13, 16. Okay, so God now said, go outside. I said, look at, can you, if you can count the dust of the earth. Meaning God was saying, if you can actually take the dust and count it. He says, if you can't count it, that is how numerous your seeds will be. Abraham did still get it. Genesis 15. God appears to Abraham. Genesis 15, verse 1. And he says, fear not. Now, you see, God, God is deep. He's deeper than deep. He's depth himself, actually. Verse 1. He says, after this, this, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Now, listen to the next verse. It's amazing. Now, God appears to Abraham. And you see, God appears and says, Fear not, I'm your shield and exceeding great reward. The next thing Abraham was going to say confirmed what Abraham's fears were. He said, Lord God, what would thou give me? I want us to read that word together. What? Seeing. I go childless. That was what Abraham was seeing. Even though God had promised him everything, he had seen the whole world, but whenever he went back, he started to see himself childless. He says, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliza of Damascus. The next verse. And Abraham said, behold to me, thou hast given no seed. This was what Abraham was seeing. And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. Verse 4. The Bible says, and behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, this shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come out, for, out of thine own boils shall be thine heir. Verse 5. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward the heavens and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. 
He said unto him, so shall thy seed be. What was God doing? He was painting a picture in Abraham's mind. Because he knew that if Abraham did not see it, it would never happen. So he said, start to count the stars. You see, this is how God operates. What do you see? No matter what the promise God has given you, no matter what you're confessing or what you are praying about, if you cannot see what God is saying, it would never happen. And so what the devil does is that the devil begins to give people terrible pictures. Pictures of defeats. Pictures of lack. And you see, you can tell to some people their words will betray you. So, for example, you know, it is now a slang when somebody tells you, say, ah, I'm strong, I'm strong. We know what it means. It's a Christian slang. It means you are sick. <laughs> you say, I'm strong. You know, what do you see? Do you see yourself getting married? Do you see yourself carrying your child? What do you see? Do you see yourself broke? Are you looking at your bank account details to determine what you are seeing? What do you see? Now, you see, this, this, what I'm sharing with you is extremely powerful. In the book of Jeremiah, God appears to Jeremiah and verse 5, very popular verse. And God wants to send Jeremiah on a mission. And God says, before I formed thee, I knew thee. He says, before you came out of the womb, he said, I sanctified thee, a prophet. Jeremiah 1, 5. Before I, you came out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee, a prophet. The next question God was going to ask Jeremiah was, what do you see? <laughs> Verse 6. He says, ah, Lord. Behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Verse 7. And then God says, sorry, who is at the... Okay, don't worry, I'll just use my stuff. You know, I cannot complain, I'm their pastor. Praise God. Jeremiah. Chapter 1. The Bible says, and the Lord God put forth his hand. Okay, no, verse 6. He says, ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I'm a child. Verse 6, 7. The Bible says, but the Lord said unto me, say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send you to, wheresoever I have commanded you, thou shalt speak. Verse 8. Be not afraid of their faces. For I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. And the Lord God put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord God said, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Now, after he had done this, now see what verse 10. He knows that if the word was in this guy's mouth, and he was not seen rightly, <laughs> nothing will happen. Though. Verse 10. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms, to root out and to pull down, and to destroy and to throw down, and to build and to plant. Verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Can we read it together? One, two, if they've gotten it now. Okay. What seest thou? He says, and I see, I see a rod of an almond tree. I don't have time to explain what that means. But verse 12 says, Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen. Now, I want you to read this very slowly. For I will esteem my word to performance. Meaning, <laughs> the performance of God's word in your life is directly proportional to what you can see. What seest thou? There are people who are trusting God for a job. What they are seeing is how they are sitting at home and how every interview they will go for, they will be turned down. That's what they are seeing. 
And the devil tries to explain it to them. Ah. What do you see? You know, our future is a creation of the pictures that we sustain in our hearts. I remember many years ago, I went to, I was working, so I went to the city of Benin. If you are from Benin, forgive me, I'm somehow from Benin, right? <laughs> so, when we got there, myself, my colleague, my boss, we got into this hotel. The, the person who was hosting us put us in this hotel, fantastic hotel. Well, not very big, but a good one. And then in the night, we had a knock on the door. <laughs> and, you know, I woke up and I told my colleague who was also in the room, I said, are you expecting anybody? He said, no. I said, okay. So I said, who is that? He said, room service. So I went to the door. As I opened the door, instead of room service, I saw a gun. Yes, true life story. It was AK-47. That was how I knew what it was. AK-47. <laughs> and these were robbers, they were operating in that hotel, told every one of us to come to the lobby. We all laid down in the lobby. And these guys, obviously, they were high on something. And they were talking. And while all of that was going on, one of them came downstairs and said, who is Joshua Demuago? <laughs> So what they had done was, of course, they had ransacked the rooms. So they saw my ATM card. And um, amazingly, that hotel had an ATM installed. So, I mean, you would just go and withdraw. So they came down. But what was sad was that that card, or in fact, they found about two. Both cards had expired. Mm. <laughs> And number two, <laughs> I had forgotten the pin because they had expired. <laughs> so <laughs> this guy said, who is Joshua? I said, I'm the one. He said, all right. Two of them. They said, oh, yeah, let's go. So they took me to the ATM. And they said, oh, yeah, withdraw. I said, Oga. <laughs> I said, these cards have expired. I said, I can't even remember the pin. <laughs> and one of them said, ah. You think so they play? For those of you who do not understand what I just said, you think I'm playing? Say, so shoot his leg. That means shoot his leg. Ah, I ran to the back of the ATM. <laughs> I said, oh, God, no. <laughs> hey, don't shoot my leg. They've expired. And you know, they were not looking at the card. You know, they were just, these guys were high. And they just kept on saying all of that. And of course, God delivered me. Somehow, they said, Okay, well, carry on back. I mean, somehow, I, I don't know. God, God was at work. So, yeah, so they took me back to where everybody was lying down. And there was this guy who was one of them who was supposed to be watching God over us. The guy was talking, saying, I hate police. I, I was just on the floor there thanking and worshiping God for, <laughs> I said, well, I'm not a policeman. So, and the guy was talking, I hate police, police, useless people. If I see any police, I just want to shoot them. I mean, I want to shoot any policeman I see. And the guy said, I'm here. Well, I was, I'm not a policeman. Lord, thank you. And the guy said, police, you know the answer, Abby? <laughs> and the guy beside me just said, the answer I said, oh, why are you doing <laughs> So why are you doing here? <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh my God! So, 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 so the prayer it became another prayer point. Ah, Lord, because you know these guys were. So they could just spray. <laughs> the Lord, <laughs> I said, God, if you deliver me from this one, I won't come to be near again. <laughs> oh dear. I'm kidding. I've gone to Benin a lot of times after that. So, that episode ended. Of course, the robbery was over. They got us and all of that. We, we got out of that situation. And the host moved us to another hotel. But I noticed that from that day, there was a picture of being robbed. 
So one of the scariest things you could tell me was ah, they rob in that area. Ah, I already start, I start to see, I remember the AK-47. Remember, say, ah, where are they going to come from? <laughs> you know, and these things were happening unconsciously. I'm sharing this story because for some of us, these things happen, and that's the way the devil works. You know, he's walking, but he ensures you don't know he's the one walking. So it was a picture. Then I noticed that we were moving. My wife and I got married. When I was, they were doing send-off for me in one of the companies I worked for, they gave me one very interesting Nokia phone. You remember there? And a while, I was like, oh, bless God. But as we moved into that house, the picture of, hey, they'll be, they can come and rob people in this house, so kept playing. But you know, I'll just ignore the picture. <laughs> and lo and behold, one day we woke up. What did we see? They had this, they used a knife, tore the net of our room, and it was that phone that was close to the, <laughs> the robber took the phone. <laughs> so that's how the phone went. I didn't learn my lesson. The picture kept playing back. I said, you see, I said it that in this area, they will rob you. Now, I and a brother in church, I won't mention his name, so that, you know, we were going to work one day, and I had just gotten this iPhone, 5C. I don't know if you're an iPhone. That was the last iPhone. I got angry after that. I'm not buying an iPhone again. <laughs> but this brand new iPhone, 5C. And as we were going in traffic, this guy just came with a knife. <laughs> and it was our car, our very car he came to. And Rob just collected my iPhone, collected my techno phone, Collected my, <laughs> and it was after that, I said, ah, ah, Joshua, what is happening? Then it occurred to me that the devil was playing a smart one. I had somehow maintained a picture of being robbed. And I said, no, 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 I have to do something about this. And of course, I knew what to do. Now, the Bible tells us in the book of, 1 John chapter 1, verse 1, talking about the word of God. And I've, I think I've shared this before. Four levels of relating with the word. He says, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard. So you can hear God's word. Which we have seen with our eyes. You can see God's word. <laughs> which we have looked upon. And our hands have handled of the word of life. So I started to ask myself, Joshua, what does the word of God say about my preservation? And then I found Psalms 91, which I have been quoting for many years. As I quoted Psalms 91, the picture of being robbed was in my mind. So that picture was being reproduced in my life. So I started to look at it. It says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I started to see myself in that scripture. That, you see, when I am walking, Joshua, you are not walking alone. You know, you are, and when we say you are not alone, it's not to motivate you. It is reality. I started to see that there are angels all around. I started to see that I am anybody who wants to get me has to, number one, locate where the secret place of the Most High is. Then locate where the shadow of the Almighty is. Then the person can now reach me. I started to see myself. Then verse 10 of this powerful book of the Bible, or verse, chapter of the Bible, says, There shall no evil befall thee. He says, Neither shall any play come. I like the way the Bible puts this. You see, if the Bible had says, No plague shall come to thee, it's powerful enough. But he says, no plague shall come near your dwelling. He's not even permitted to come near. <laughs> ah. So I started to see myself. I meditated on it, thought about it, until I saw a picture of victory. So now, I enter planes. I know the plane ain't dropping because I'm in it. Amen? I, I go anywhere. And of course... When God leads you not to go somewhere, you don't go, right? But I go anywhere. I was led by God, and I'm not afraid. 
because there shall no evil before me. Now, that has become my reality. Praise the Lord. You see, in your health, are you seeing yourself living 80, 85, 90, healthy? Or are you seeing yourself being a sickly 80 or 85 old person? What have you called normal that God is saying is unnecessary? What kind of picture do you see about your future? You know, the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5, and one of the verses that says, casting down imaginations. That means that you do not let imaginations just exist. You must be intentional and deliberate about the kinds of imagination that you have. Very intentional. When you look into God's word, as you study God's word, do not stop there. Begin to see yourself in that word. When the Bible talks about our prosperity, begin to see yourself giving to the poor. These are things I have seen. So I've stopped praying for cars. I'm praying for things. I see myself giving out cars. That's what I'm seeing. I see myself giving out houses. Why people are still shouting that somebody bought jets? I am already seeing myself giving out jets. That's where I see it. Ah. These are the pictures in my mind. And when we pray, as I close... When we pray, the Bible says something in 1 Corinthians 14, 14. When we pray, 1 Corinthians 14, 14 says that when you, 14, 14, please. He says, if I pray in an unknown tongue, said my spirit prayers, but my understanding, that word understanding is my mind, is unfruitful. Amplified says unproductive. Why is your mind unfruitful and unproductive? Because as you are praying, that is an avenue for God to begin to throw pictures. And you know what has happened? God throws pictures and we reject those pictures. <laughs> God begins to throw pictures in your mind about how well you are doing. About how beautiful life can be. You can practically sit down where you are and begin to envision a beautiful future for yourself. Regardless of what's happening around you. You can actually change and orchestrate the kind of... And God won't say no. Because this is a principle from God. And God said, nothing will be restrained from them if they've imagined it. So saints, it's time to start to imagine. It's time to start to see what God has said. That is how what he has said will become a reality in our lives. Can you rise up on your feet this morning? I want you to pray very simply. Lord Jesus, help me to see what you see. Can you pray? It's one of the most powerful prayers you can ever pray. Lord, help me see what you see. Regardless of what has happened. I mean, is it a picture of death? Start to see life. Start to see life. I will not die. But I'll live. But beyond just saying it, start to see it. Start to see yourself in health. See yourself living life large, living life and enjoying the best of God. See yourself carrying that child. See that child healthy. Father, help me see what you see. In your mercy. In the name of Jesus we have prayed. Is somebody blessed this morning? Hello, thank you for watching us. We don't want this to end without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You know, um, after listening to God's word like this and you have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, it's an opportunity to come to him and it's a simple process because he has made all things available. I want to employ you now to give your heart to Christ. And by saying these words, because giving your heart to Christ must be done consciously. He has paid the price. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I believe that you died for me and that you rose again. I believe that you shed your blood for my justification. 
I accept your finished work right now, and I confess that you are the Lord of my life. I believe in you. Thank you, Jesus. If you have said those words, you are actually born again, a new creation in Christ. Join us for more of this. God bless you.